Hi, hi everyone. Uh, my name is David Radcliffe. Um, I work at Shopify. I'm a production engineer, which is our word for SRE. Uh, if you're not familiar with Shopify, we are a commerce platform. Uh, we power almost 400,000 merchants, and um, our, our teams build infrastructure systems for our platform, which spans uh, multiple data centers and multiple clouds. Um, my specific team has been building systems and automation for our data center. And um, so that's what I'm going to talk uh, a little bit about today. So just to give you um, a little context, a little history, uh, a few years back, we had uh, a single colo deployment. We had just a few cabinets, uh, dozens of servers. Everything was tracked in a spreadsheet. Uh, and that was if we were lucky. Um, I'm sure some of you can uh, understand this, and this is maybe where you are today. Uh, bootstrapping new servers took many hours and many manual steps. Uh, it was really painful, and I even heard stories of passing around CD-ROMs in the data center to install OS. Uh, not, not a happy time. And then uh, let's fast forward a little bit. We have now multiple data centers. Uh, many cabinets, hundreds of servers. Uh, spreadsheet was just not working at all, um, as you can imagine. Um, and so we started using a tool built by Tumblr called Collins. And this was software built to track data centers and, and hardware in data centers. Uh, and this was much better. We had a clear picture of what we had. And um, it helped us with uh, a bootstrapping was down to roughly 30 minutes per server. There were still a lot of manual steps, and uh, we had trouble customizing Collins to really do exactly what we wanted. Um, so it still was not totally working. So uh, fast forward again. Uh, this year, we have even more cabinets. We have thousands of servers. At this point, uh, all of the previous solutions weren't really working, and automation was necessary. We, we couldn't keep doing things manually. We couldn't do anything uh, one step at a time. We had to automate everything. And so we built uh, a custom solution. So we set out with a few goals in mind. Um, the first goal was we needed to keep track of all of our equipment. Um, we, this is mostly servers, but we have multiple data centers, and so obviously we need to keep track of what was in what data center. So we have uh, data centers, we have rooms, we have cages, we have racks and chassis, and then we also track all the network equipment, um, switches and routers, and then everything inside of a server that could be reused, so disks, NICs, uh, memory, all of those components. Um, and another goal we had is um, running, since we're running our own hardware, uh, this means that we have to keep on top of the supply chain. Um, this is important so that we have capacity to fulfill um, all the requests, keep everyone happy. So having an accurate view uh, of that is important. And finally, we wanted to automate our provisioning pipeline. Um, from receiving new shipments of equipment to provisioning servers for a specific role and even decommissioning old hardware needed to be automated. So we built Genesis. Um, Genesis is our central source of truth. Uh, it's shared database that has the details of all our hardware. Um, we can look at it any time, and we can see what we have um, running and where it is. And it's surrounded by a suite of uh, tooling that some of it we built ourselves, and some of it is um, from other people. And together, it, it uh, helps us with these goals. Uh, it was important to keep Genesis up to date, and so we needed to automate all of the data collection. And so we have uh, the an agent that runs on every server, and it collects uh, all sorts of information. You probably can't read this, but this is just uh, a bunch of information that uh, mostly hardware information that we collect on the server and we send back to Genesis. Um, mostly hardware, uh, and then some about the context of what's running on the server at the OS level. Genesis runs in the cloud uh, outside of any of our data centers, uh, and this is important for later. 
Um, so next goal we needed to fulfill was automation. So we're tracking everything, but we need to automate our pipeline now. And so most of automation is not directly actionable by Genesis because it's not in the data center. Um, and so uh, we have uh, automation agents that run in each data center. And Genesis mostly acts as a queue. And these agents will talk to Genesis and find out if there's work to be done in that data center zone. And they will pick up a job and run, run the actions. Uh, so Genesis has this concept of remote actions. Uh, this could be like power cycling a server, could be turning on the light on the server, uh, bootstrapping or decommissioning servers. Uh, this allowed us to move away from human actions and playbooks into scripted, uh, repeatable, automated actions. Um, the friendly UI in Genesis uh, kind of gave us a simple abstraction so that we could uh, do complicated data center tasks and anyone on production engineering could uh, do these things. So how does this work uh, for bootstrapping? Uh, we already use Chef uh, for configuration management. Uh, we, the same principles could be applied to any configuration management system. Uh, but we use Chef. And so we started using um, server spec and test kitchen uh, to test our Chef recipes. This gave us uh, more confidence in our recipes and uh, make sure that they actually do what we think they're going to do. Um, so this we have a we have a CI pipeline for our cookbooks, but this um, is not quite enough still. So we created a tool called called Line Cook. Um, what Line Cook does is it basically just wraps test take a test kitchen and it runs the test kitchen suites, uh, which these different suites match the roles we have in production. And at the end, it uses Packer uh, to create an image from the the system that we just built. So uh, every time it runs, it goes from the base OS and it builds up uh, this complete system uh, using our same production cookbooks that we use on the servers. It takes a snapshot image and we store that artifact uh, for use in the data centers. And as a bonus, we can then translate those images into cloud uh, image formats, like an AMI, uh, and we can use those in all our uh, cloud areas as well. So every commit to our cookbooks triggers a new line cook run, which results in a new image. If someone breaks the build, or more accurately, they break the bootstrap, we know right away, instead of days or weeks later, finding out that, oh no, we can't bootstrap this role from scratch. Uh, this was really important because we were often found ourselves like bootstrapping a server that we hadn't bootstrapped in a while, and it may work in production, but from scratch, it doesn't work at all. And that was very painful. And we don't have that problem anymore because we every commit runs from scratch in CI. And we have confidence in this process now. Um, the next we built our own iPixie framework. Uh, we call it Zygote. And it boots an in-memory in live image. And this system knows how to uh, set up all the disks and install this image on the servers. So how do we fit this all together? So from Genesis, we create a new bootstrap remote action. Uh, an agent in the data center picks up the job, tells Zygote that this specific server should be re-imaged. The agent then reboots the machine using IPMI. The server boots, and Zygote answers the call. It knows that this server needs to be re-imaged, so it boots the in-memory live sys and configures the disks, um, and then uh, installs the new image on the server. Then the server is rebooted, and this time it boots up into the real system. Uh, at this point, we're basically 99% done because we started with the image. So then we run Chef once more to catch up any changes that have happened since that image was baked. Uh, if we had just started with the OS, the first Chef run might have taken, I don't know, 30 minutes, depending on what software needs to be installed and configured. Uh, but usually now this first run is about a minute or two at most. Throughout this process, each piece of this uh, system communicates back to Genesis and 
report status so we can see from the UI where we are in the process. And um, once this last run is complete, the bootstrap is complete, server is in use and ready to, ready to go. This whole process takes about 10 minutes depending on uh, the, which server role and you know, how many disks it has to configure, et cetera. Um, and we can do multiple bootstraps in parallel easily. This makes it very trivial, trivial to intake a whole new batch of servers. Uh, sometimes we take a whole new rack all at once and plug them in and no human interaction. They all uh, register themselves, go through this process and just appear as spares ready, ready for us to pick a role and uh, use them. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, some some takeaways from what we've learned: um, testing our bootstraps and making a CI pipeline was a huge win, and really every piece uh, that we moved from a human doing manual tasks into a computer doing automated tasks was uh, was really great for us. Even if you don't have bare metal servers, you can still apply these principles to t tooling that you can build around processes, and um, it's totally worth it to, to invest in the tooling. Um, we're planning on making Genesis and these uh, tools we've written uh, open source soon. Uh, if you want to talk more about any of this or um, get an early look at the code, uh, come talk to me. Um, be happy to give you that and talk more about it. Um, Uh, the Shopify booth out uh, in the lobby there um, has a bunch of our SREs. Um, we've got a bunch of topics that we're uh, happy to talk about. Uh, if you want to talk about anything, come over. Um, and then we've got uh, an engineering blog, shopify.com slash engineering, and our Twitter, Shopify Eng, uh, where we talk about some of these things too. And that's all. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much, David. Um.